So you may have heard that uh, something happened in America. Mm-hmm. Something small. Uh, apparently Roe v. Wade was repealed. And I think that uh, it's worth going into why this happened. Mm-hmm. Because this turns out to have been a magnificent cell phone for leftists. Mm. Uh, they made this happen to themselves. And so we'll go through it and talk about uh, what the ruling means and the arguments against the ruling mm. and some further consequences. But before we start, if you'd like to support us, you can go to lowseas.com and check out our latest epochs on Alfred the Great, which is one Bo and I did, which I really enjoyed because the life of Alfred the Great is a fascinating life. And uh, he certainly would have been in favour of repealing Roe versus Wade, so that's why I decided to promote Although I don't believe any primary sources on his opinions on abortion survived to this day. No, but the earliest ones we have go back to the 13th century. Wow. Which are cited in the ruling, incidentally. No way. I'm not even joking, no. I'm not joking, no, no. It's a long history of common law that they always uh, fall back on right. because it's precedent-based. And, yeah, it goes right the way back to the 13th century uh, where it is the quickening of the woman that is used. And that, that means when she can first feel movement. Mm. Uh, and then from that point onwards, it's murder. Wow. So we actually have precedents on this. But anyway, so this all begins in May of 2021 when a court in Mississippi, Mississippi sorry, uh, was... A appeal, well, it's quite a long long thing, but uh, basically there is one abortion clinic in Mississippi, the Jackson mm-hmm. Women's Health Organization. And in Mississippi, the state justices there decided to enact a law in 2018 that prohibits most abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. Mm-hmm. So actually around the sort of time of the 13th century quickening, actually. Uh, this, is, this is roughly when women first start feeling movement. And uh, this didn't go down well with the Jackson Women's Health Organization, who filed a lawsuit to challenge the law. Uh, the federal court struck down the ban, finding it unconstitutional, of course, under the auspices of Roe v. Wade. Yep. And so this was sent to a court of appeals, and they kicked it up to the Supreme Court. Uh, and so, because the Supreme Court can't just be like, well, we're just going to choose this law that we're going to fill around with yeah. now. It has to be based on what is actually going through the courts, and then it's pushed right. up to them. Yep. And so if the Jackson's Women Health Organization had just been like, okay, well, we'll just deal with that, then none of this would have happened, or at least not now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the, the Center for Reproductive Rights was representing Jackson's Women's Health Organization, argued that the court should reject Mississippi's argument as it is based on a misunderstanding of the core principle of their past decisions. Uh, the CEO for the Center of Reproductive Rights, Nancy Northup, was like, oh, Alarm bells should be ringing loudly about the threat of reproductive rights. So yes, yes, they should. Mm-hmm. Uh, they uh, they were complaining that basically it's difficult for people to get abortion in Mississippi because lawmakers have been chipping away at the right to abortion for decades. Yeah, because people in Mississippi keep voting for people who are against abortion. Right, yeah. Because it turns out that if you're a Christian, there's something, I don't know, there's this old dusty book that has something to do with morality and not murdering babies in the womb it's it, like it's weird and the the, the, the absolute knuckle draggers in mississippi mm-hmm. still adhere to this archaic morality of the sanctity of life i, I just don't understand it and that is curious that uh, <laughs> even back in the bible uh, in the ancient hebrew the mm. ancient israelites they were arguing about abortion rights they, they had were. to have a sacred ruling on it in leviticus and so on yes indeed very curious um but uh but that's so these these absolute you know primitives keep engaging in something called democracy Ugh. and uh, voting for further primitives who keep voting for this primitive archaic morality uh, and so that's why mississippi has it, been trying to limit the extent to which abortion can go and so this is how this all got kicked up to the Supreme Court and why they ended up making the decision they made. Uh, we'll, we'll cover in a second, in fact. But so it's interesting because a lot of people in America, the forward-thinking progressives, not the disgusting throwbacks, uh, have been saying, well, look, we just want to be like Europe. We just want social health care. We just want weird European rules. And the thing they don't want are the abortion legislation of Europe. Yeah. which is actually really similar, if not more restrictive, than what was being proposed in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. As you can see, France and Germany, after 12 weeks, no. Yeah. I mean, I, Poland, do you want the Polish view on this? Mm-hmm. You don't even want the Ukrainian view on this. Oh, although I must say, it really annoys me that they've done that thing of conflating Europe with the EU again, because they've greyed out Finland and Britain. They have. Uh, Switzerland that, is still in there, though, curiously. Yes, it, I, it's 
strange. But mm. uh, but the point is, Europe is actually very conservative from an American perspective when it comes to the question of abortion. Mm. So be careful what you wish for. So you just might get it. Anyway, let's go on to talk about the ruling, because the ruling, I think, is actually really interesting. Mm. Because on one side, you've got disgusting, throwback, conservative fascists who are arguing about constitutional rights. Yeah, people who literally want to recreate the dystopia from The Handmaid's Tale. Yes, and then on the other side, you have the, the glorious progressives who are arguing from their feelings. And we know which one of these is important, right? So... You've got uh, a very, very interesting uh, statement from Judge Alito, who gives the court's opinion, as in the majority opinion of the court. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, he says, look, uh, the provision that has been held to guarantee some rights that is not mentioned in the Constitution, because the Constitution accepts there are implicit rights that are contained within it that are not expressly laid out. Mm. Uh, and so he says, no, th this is true, but abortion is not one of them. And yeah. so is such a right deeply rooted in the nation's history and tradition mm -hmm. and implicit in the concept of ordered liberty? And they conclude that no, abortion is not in that category. Because until the latter part of the 20th century, such a right was entirely unknown in American law. Wow. Indeed, when the 14th Amendment was adopted, three quarters of the United States made abortion a crime at all stages of pregnancy. So, no, this is just not something that's been there. Mm -hmm. uh, the abortion right is also critically different from any other right that the court has held, to fall within the 14th Amendment's protection of liberty, as in this is, this is where the right to privacy comes from. Yeah. So that the, uh, a woman's obviously private right to murder a baby. Um, Rose defenders characterize abortion right, this abortion right, as similar to the recognized rights in past decisions involving matters such as intimate sexual relations, contraception, and marriage. But abortion is fundamentally different, as both Roe and Casey acknowledged, because it destroys uh, what those decisions call fetal life, and what uh, the law now before us describes as an unborn human being. Uh, yes, so there is someone else's life is involved in your liberty. And of course, if you know anything about the straight white men who framed the Constitution, uh, it was to protect your rights insofar as they didn't trample on other people's rights. Again, just th absolute throwbacks. Uh, and so they conclude that Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak. The decision had damaging consequences. Far from bringing about a national settlement on the abortion issue, Roe and Casey have inflamed the debate and de deepened the division. They go through loads of precedents, as we were talking about, going all the way back to 13th century English common law, mm -hmm. uh, when the movement was first felt around 16 to 18 weeks. And it's just very, very factually correct, as far as I, my reading of it. So I'm not a lawyer, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, but also, one thing I couldn't help but notice is that they are appealing to the law. Now, that seems remarkable mm -hmm. for a judgment to appeal to the law as written in the Constitution of the United States. If that is at all relevant or interesting or important in any way, shape or form to an American. Now, I'm not an American. Maybe it's not because I read the dissenting opinions of the, uh, the three liberal justices mm -hmm. uh, who... <laughs> That don't seem to care about that at all. Who don't even appeal to it, right? So if we go to the next one, we just go, we'll pull out their, their their furious dissent. They say it's catastrophic to women's freedoms and women's rights. It's like, okay, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about whether this is within the, the remit of the Constitution. So they say... The majority has overruled Roe versus Casey for one and one only reason, because it has always despised them, and now it has the votes to discard them. Maybe, but they're actually talking about the law. Mm -hmm. The court overruled the constitutional right to an abortion, which it was imposed 50 years ago, and uh, they say the majority thereby sub substitutes a rule by judges for the rule of law. Wow. So they're actually making, first of all, a personal attack on their colleagues in the Supreme yes. Court. Um, and then they're going to the old canard of uh, the judges have too much power. The judges are saying the judges have too much power in America because this time they're on the wrong side. But I don't think they say that when they are making legislation. Precisely. Doesn't that also apply to when Roe v. Wade was it does. used as a precedent? Exactly. And the fact that they're striking down these this ruling made by the previous Supreme Court is... It, Actually, it's reducing the influence of the court on how things are run by substituting their <laughs> ruling for the state's opinions. Yes, it's it's the total opposite of reality mm -hmm. that is actually happening here. So, in fact, what they're doing is 
reducing rule by judges for the democratic rule of law. Mm -hmm. So now the states themselves can have their own opinion on this most contentious of moral issues. And not the state judges, the state elected <laughs> officials. Yes, the, yes, the legislators themselves. Therefore, the representatives of the people. Therefore, this is the most democratic motion that they could have had mm -hmm. out of this circumstance. Uh, they say, in the end... The majority says it must be it, it all it must say to override stared decry I can't pronounce this uh, but anyway it says Roe versus Casey is egregiously wrong uh, that rule could equally spend the end of any precedent with with which a bare majority of the present court disagrees it makes radical change too easy and too fast based on nothing more than the new views of new judges right so the progressives are saying we shouldn't have radical change and we shouldn't have it quickly. Mm -hmm. Return to tradition, say the progressive judges. Everything you're doing here is totally backwards <laughs> and outside of your own philosophy. Mm. That's a very strange... You're going, this radical change is too quick. Now define woman for me. Well, what they're really saying is that the arrow of history only points one way, which is in the direction of progress, which <laughs> yes. is their opinions, and yes. anything which moves in a radical direction other than their opinions is backwards. Yes. But, is, but isn't, it, isn't it interesting how they, they're just, oh no, radical change is too easy and too fast. You love radical change. Shut up. You know, honestly. What, and again, you're not appealing to the Constitution, not appealing to law. Mm -hmm. What you're appealing to is like extraneous moral mm -hmm. value judgments. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well, you know, let's see, there are some, uh, more conservatives on the Supreme Court. It almost reads like a don't firebomb my house statement, doesn't it? Yes, it does, actually. Uh, it, we, we very much agree with the mob, <laughs> is what they're saying here. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, but anyway, yeah, so uh, again, when it comes to rights, the court does not act neutrally when it leaves everything up to the states, the liberals wrote. Uh -huh. When the court decimates a right women have held for 50 years, the court is not being scrupulously neutral. It is instead taking sides against women who wish to exercise the right of the states like Mississippi that want to bar them from doing so. Again, you're not speaking about what's in the Constitution, which is your job mm -hmm. as the Supreme Court of the United States. Mm -hmm. You are speaking of, again, extraneous political considerations. That's nothing to do with the subject. Mm -hmm. You're not even rebuking or refuting the majority justices when they're saying, well, these are the legal reasons why it should be a states' rights issue. Yeah. Yeah. You have no argument here. And it's mm. crystal clear. And so you are moralizing irrelevantly a point to it. And, uh, and it, uh, Kavanaugh even points this out. It's like, look, mm -hmm. you're just appropriating the rhetoric of even-handedness. <laughs> yeah, equality of outcome. Yeah. Right, so. yeah. Uh, and so they, they, they conclude with, in overruling Roe and Casey, this court betrays its guiding principles with sorrow for this court, but for more for the many millions of American women who have today lost a fundamental constitutional protection, we dissent. Oh, it's heroic. I just want to point out that uh, the dissenting judges are acting well and truly in the tradition of J.K. Galbraith, who introduced the whole theory of American judicial activism. Namely, they're giving rulings based not on the letter of the statute in front of them, but on the, uh, the fuzzy, moral, progressive ideas in their heads, yes. because that's what an enlightened progressive judge is supposed to yes. do. Unlike acting these, as political agents. Yes, unlike these goddamn throwbacks who are just acting in the interests of protecting constitutional rights. It's just it's so, so mm. retrograde. But anyway, I thought it might be worth talking about uh, Norma McCorvey. Otherwise known as Jane Roe. That's correct. Who, uh, who really doesn't like, or didn't like, she's dead now, I'm afraid, uh, but didn't like the way that all this had gone. Because a lot of people don't really realise that... Uh, this was a lie. This whole thing was based on a lie. Uh, McCorvey had, in 1973, gotten herself pregnant. Uh, she claimed she was raped, and this ended up uh, resolving in the majority justice saying you know, she's got a constitutional right to an abortion, which uh, turned out she didn't. Um, but then in tw 2005, she had come out and said, in fact, in 2003, she'd even come out earlier. It was in 1995 mm -hmm. that she became an anti-abortion activist mm. because she realized actually this is terrible mm -hmm. and wrong. In 2005, she said, abortion is a shameful and secret thing. I wanted to justify my desire for an abortion in my own mind, as almost every woman who participates in the killing of her own child must also do. I made up the story that I had been raped to help justify my abortion. Yeah. <laughs> quite incredible isn't it yes so this this warping of the constitution of the united states was warped on a lie 
that the person who had told the lie recanted. And in 2003, mm-hmm. if we can get to the next one, uh, she, in 1995, she had joined uh, the anti-abortion lobby and was an activist for it, against it. And uh, she says she regrets her role in Roe v. Wade and said the Supreme Court's decision is no longer valid because of scientific and anecdotal evidence that have come mm-hmm. to light in the last 30 years has shown the negative effects of abortion. Uh, we're getting our babies back, she said at a news conference, while flanked by about 60 women, some who sobbed and held signs that read, I regret my abortion. Yeah, now, just to mention here, there is a story that she recounted this on her deathbed. And there is the It was included in a documentary. Um, however, when you look a bit further into uh, Jane Roe, Norma McCorvey's life story, she doesn't really seem like a particularly reliable person. So it's entirely tr- like she was um, arrested for petty larceny for robbing a cash till when she was like 10 years old or something like that, yeah. I believe. Um, and so she's had a, a fairly interesting life, shall we say. And it's entirely possible that she could have been bought off by the anti-abortion lobby to say all these things. Um, fundamentally, she's quite unreliable. And I think it goes to, to point out that these sort of egregious extreme cases make bad law in the end. They do. Uh, whether she does actually recant or not is actually up in the air because there are quotes from that very same documentary that imply the opposite. Right. Uh, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the point is she did spend a lot of time campaigning against abortion. Yeah. Uh, even, and the, the allegation from this documentary, which is, of course, made by progressives, was that on her deathbed she said, I don't care about the issue. Oh, that's it. Yes. And it's like, right, okay. I doubt it. But <laughs> well, on your deathbed, you probably don't, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. And as she said, I didn't even get an abortion anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she didn't get an abortion, maybe, who knows. But anyway, so the consequence of repealing Roe v. Wade is that certain co- uh, conservative states are going to make abortion illegal because that's how they view it on a moral level and they have the right under the constitution to enact laws as such. Mm-hmm. Uh, there there have been three states that had abortion bans that went into effect immediately, mm-hmm. Kentucky, Louisiana, and South Dakota. Uh, there are three states who have abortion bans in place 30 days after, which is Idaho, Texas, and Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And then there are states that need an official to enact the ban on the law, which they're probably going to. Arkansas, Mississippi, Missouri, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Utah, and Wyoming. Doubtless going to. Now, there are there are some, uh, you know, fine details in these. Like Utah, for example, will have uh, an exemption for uh, lethal fetal abnormality or and rape and incest in certain uh, other ones, mm-hmm. things like this. But it's, it's basically, uh, in summary, the baby holocaust is over in these conservative states. Uh, literally, if you go to the next one, you can see the Planned Parenthood like, well, I guess we've got to stop. So yeah, you've got to stop. How wow. terrible for you. Uh, but the thing is, and this is the thing that really was interesting, uh, Alito tried to, in his statement, say, mm-hmm. well, look, this doesn't change any of the other progressive uh, judgments that have been made. Mm-hmm. Where it is just for the abortion issue. Mm-hmm. And Clarence Thomas was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> actually... It turns out that uh, Clarence Thomas seems to have left the door open. Uh, in fact, not just left the door open, he he explicitly called for other rulings to be revised because, again, these are things that are not mentioned in the Constitution. And so by the same principle, well, it could be that conservative states might want to talk about same-sex marriage, contraception, and various other major rulings. So basically, 50 years later, we're finally getting the reaction to J.K. Galbraith's nonsense of judicial activism. Yes. Uh, the progressive era of the 20th century uh, may well be coming tumbling down, mm. at least in about half of America. Very interesting. Uh, and so, yeah, the I think uh, I, I've, I've found myself very much warming to Clarence Thomas. Uh, the way they've been treating him afterwards just makes me like him more. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he doesn't seem to care about their opinions at all mm. is also wonderful. So that's how Roe versus Wade uh, came to be undone. Uh, let's carry on. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the Contemplation series, this one on what makes good art part three. If you want to follow what else Josh is putting out, you can follow him on Getter at at Josh underscore firm on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.